Hello and welcome to our series on India's conflicts after our independence as part of the 75th year of Indian independence and the contribution of the Indian armed forces to guard the territorial integrity of India and its sovereignty. In the 1980s, India had begun to receive reports of some patrols from Pakistan looking at the possibility of taking control of the Siachen Glacier. The Siachen Glacier is right on the top of the map of India where the boundaries of Kashmir clash with the boundaries of the adjoining areas, the China controlled regions beyond Aksai Chin near the Karakoram Pass as well as the northern areas of the Pakistani occupied Kashmir and Siachen is a long glacier. It is regarded by soldiers as the third pole and was discovered in the 1870s by a British couple that mapped that glacier which is today strategically extremely important. But the line of control that divides India's influence over Jammu and Kashmir with that of Pakistan's control of what we call POK ends abruptly south of the Siachen Glacier at a point called NJ9842 which is just north of Leh in Ladakh. Beyond that, the boundaries of India and Pakistan were left unmarked because in previous wars no conflict had taken place in that area. So it was in a way no man's land, what you grab is for you to keep and Pakistan started probing on the possibilities of capturing the Siachen Glacier, influenced as we know now by the Chinese strategic agenda of taking control of almost all the important glaciers and water areas in the northern parts of the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. India got wind of it through a report that one of India's embassies gave from Europe that some Pakistanis had been looking for 3,000 odd sets of mountaineering boots with other military equipment. This information was authenticated by some raw officials in Jammu and Kashmir to Delhi. And the picture that emerged was that Pakistan was thinking of launching a brigade to capture Siachen Glacier. Indian military officers responded immediately. At the lead was an officer by the name of Colonel Narendra Kumar, better known as Bull Kumar, who was a mountaineer of excellence. And along with him was several other young officers who were chosen to go with him to the first expedition on the Siachen Glacier sometime in mid-1984. These included some officers who rose to the rank of Lieutenant General, General Kulkarni, General Shokin Chohan and some others. They braved weather, they braved very tough terrain conditions and reached the Soltoro Heights which really lie on the western edge of the Siachen Glacier. It's a long glacier, 76 odd kilometers long. And on the western edge of the glacier is the Saltoro Heights, which divides the glacier from any intruder that might want to come to the glacier area from POK. It is said, there is an old legend, that the weather and the conditions there are so fierce that only your best friend and your worst enemies will visit you. But Indian troops went and occupied those heights along the Saltoro Ridge, which keeps the glacier clearly under Indian control. And this starts from a point called NJ9842, which is 
a mountain height and from there the Soltoro Ridge runs right up to the furthermost point called Indira Kol. This is now known as the AGPL, Actual Ground Position Line. Pakistan obviously didn't take kindly to Indian efforts to get there. Some of our troops stayed on for up to a month there without logistic support. And I have read accounts, most notably in a book by Nitin Gokhale called Beyond NJ9842, that some officers and men didn't change their clothes for up to one month. They didn't go there suitably equipped to stay long. But braving the weather, braving inclement conditions, they hung on. Soon, helicopters became their lifeline and troops stayed there. And Pakistan, disappointed as it was by India's military coup de grace, as it were, started putting attacks on Indian position, started artillery shelling. There were avalanches, there were fierce conditions. A roti, I remember, in the mid 80s being told would cost you up to 25 rupees and that was a very princely sum in those days. And a helicopter could either carry a man onto those heights or his equipment and the food stuff. So everyone lived in very Spartan conditions, but fighting went on. Till mid-1987, India captured all the important heights along the Saltoro Ridge, including what the Pakistanis had named as the highest post called Qaid Post after qaid azam Jinnah. But after fierce fighting, Indians captured it and renamed it Bana Top after Havaldar Bana Singh later Subedar and retired, a winner of the Paramvit Chakra. But how this happened is a story by itself. Around 13th April 1987, India decided to launch a major military operation to take control of all the important heights which were still eluding total Indian control. These heights were all in the range of 18 to 20,000 feet above sea level. And please understand that beyond 9,000 feet above sea level, your body begins to behave differently. You can't stay there forever. The fierce cold can give you frostbite at the slightest exposure to your limbs or body parts. Breathing is difficult. Temperatures in winters run to minus 40 degrees plus minus and the wind chill factor is very difficult to bear with. Sometimes wind comes to you at about 100 kilometers an hour. Imagine a car coming at 100 kilometers an hour and hitting you while you're standing on a hilltop. You'll obviously fall off. But Indian troops not to be deterred. One particular battalion, 8 Chakalai, which today has the honor of calling itself 8 Jekyllai Siachin, decided to launch its operations. After one of their officers, Lieutenant Rajiv, and some men lost their life in a probing patrol. So they called it Op Rajiv. Coincidentally, Prime Minister of India at that time was Rajiv Gandhi, but it was not named after him. It was named after this young officer who died in his operational efforts there. The commanders on the ground, like General Chibba, who was the Director General of Military Intelligence, went initially in the 1980s when Mrs. Gandhi was alive to seek her approval. Mrs. Gandhi approved India's military involvement in Siachen around 83-84 and she was told that if we are not responding there, we will end up with the Pakistanis presenting us with a fate comply because from one side the Pakistanis would come in, on the other side from Aksai Jin the Chinese would come in and take control of the area around the glacier and then look down comfortably in the Leh Ladakh region, which is what Pakistanis attempted to do again in 1999 through Musharraf's op in the Kargil region. But that is another story. Here, the Indian troops were pushed in against blizzards, cold weather, 
and at occasions they moved a few hundred yards in a few hours because snow was up to chest deep. But they struggled and they moved on. And eventually, as Bana Singh himself personally told me, the last effort to get to Bana Top took them three days and three nights to move up to 300 yards, which is not a very far distance. But they lay low during the day because the Pakistanis should not notice that there were humans lying in that snow. And at night they crawled up, saddle one, saddle two, saddle three. When they reached Bana Top, they got into a fierce hand-to-hand -hand fight with the Pakistanis. And Bana Top is a very narrow top. I've seen it personally on my visit to Siachen. And it can barely hold about eight or ten people. And they fought to the nail. Eventually, Bana Singh and his team of seven, eight soldiers from eight Jekyllai, they eliminated and killed all the Pakistanis who resisted like hell. Some of them were from the Special Forces of Pakistan. But the end result was that India occupied the highest peak and the entire Soltoro Ridge then more or less came under India's domination. What happened thereafter is another story.